Hello and welcome to Kettle's Yard. I'm Imogen and I'm going to show you round today and I'm going to give you some things to think about, to talk about and to draw to help you explore Kettle's Yard in the classroom or at home. But first of all, what is Kettle's Yard? Kettle's Yard is an unusual place because it's a home but it's also an art gallery. Kettle's Yard was the home of a couple called Jim and Helen Ede. Jim and Helen loved art and they thought that it was so important that it shouldn't just be something you encounter on a really special day when you go on an outing to a big museum, but instead it should be part of your everyday life. So they filled their home at Kettle's Yard with beautiful special objects, works of art, things from nature, books, literature, all mixed up with the furniture and stuff of everyday life. And then each day they opened the doors of their house and invited people to come in and share in this space that they'd created. So I'm going to go in and see what we can discover there. I'm here in the first room in Kettle's Yard, where Jim and Helen would invite visitors in but also where they lived their everyday lives, where they had breakfast or wrote their letters or relaxed. We're in 19th century cottages, so the rooms are quite small and the ceilings are low, but it's been really carefully put together so it never feels too crowded. There's a very particular smell to the place. You can tell you're somewhere old and special Lots of people walk in here and they go, smells like my grandpa. I'd like you to take a moment and look around the room. Look for little things, look for big things, and then take a moment with a person who's near you and talk about what you can see. You might want to talk about what furniture you can see or what paintings you can spot. What else is around? What's been put on tables? What's on the floor or on the mantelpiece? Is there anything that you find particularly beautiful or familiar or surprising? There's going to be some time now for you to talk about these things, either with the person next to you or as a whole class.
you probably notice some things that you all have in some form at home, like a table to eat at, or a comfy chair, or perhaps even something that you've collected that's special to you, like a shell from a trip to the beach, or a beautiful feather that you've noticed and picked up. But I imagine, as you looked, you also discovered some very unusual things, like a painted pot, or the paintings, or a surprising lemon on its own on a plate. Let's have a look at this area in more detail and see what Jim was thinking about when he put it all together. Here we've got a dark wooden chest and plate with a dark painting above it and a single splash of colour from the lemon. Jim loved what was special about each individual object, like this old pewter plate is hundreds of years old. But he was even more interested in what happens when you bring each individual object together. Suddenly, these darker scenes in the painting on dark furniture are lit up by the splash of colour from the lemon. And they're also connected with other moments of yellow across the room. Looking over here, we see a single yellow dot in this painting by the artist John Miro. Jim used to stand and put his hand over different parts of the painting to invite you to see how the whole thing looked different when you took one thing away. He used to say, if you blocked out the red dot, everything else bunched up so it looked like it was on the other side. It's exactly the same thing with Kettle's Yard. It's full of individual pieces, but each of them really affects how the whole room works together. So this yellow lemon sparks out towards this yellow dot, and then that dot connects over to the other side of the room, where you've got bright yellow flowers sitting on a table, opposite a painting that also has yellow flowers in. Every single element across the room working together to make a carefully balanced whole. Here in Jim's bedroom is another corner where we can see just how carefully Jim put Kettle's yard together. Take a moment with the people who are around you and look really carefully and talk about what you can see. Can you see any connections in the shapes or the patterns or perhaps the themes? You can think about what's on the table, but also the table itself and also the space around it. Now let's start making our own creative responses to Kettle's Yard. And we'll do that by starting with a simple drawing activity. Take a sheet of paper and either draw a circle on it or you can download one as a stencil. Have a look at the table and pick an object that you like or that you think is interesting and draw it in your circle. When you've done that, have a look at the space left around it. Do you want to add in another object, perhaps from the table or just from your imagination? 
what might go well together. You could fill your table with lots of objects or just put in a few. Don't worry about making it exactly right, but this is just a chance for you to start getting your imagination going.
as well as a spiral of pebbles, Kettle's Yard is full of lots of other spirals. There are spiral mats, a spiral pillar, and even a specially built spiral staircase. I'm going to go up that now, and we can explore the rest of Kettle's Yard. Throughout the house, there are lots of repeated shapes and patterns. This helps our eye move through the house in a rhythm and creates a sense of calm and balance. I'm now in Jim and Helen's living room and it's got that same mix of artwork, furniture, books and objects from nature that Jim and Helen had found and noticed how beautiful they were. Another thing that Jim thought really hard about when he was putting together Kettle's Yard was the light. Jim always thought that the light was the most important thing in a room. Jim also loved objects that made reflections. Have a look around this space and see how many different objects you can see that create reflections. Another way that Jim and Helen celebrated light at Kettle's Yard was by filling some of their windows with plants. This is one of my favourite spots in Kettle's Yard because it's so green and fresh and there's so much to see. There are lots of different plants of all sorts of shapes and sizes. Here we have a poem sculpture by the artist Ian Hamilton Finlay. There are shells and pebbles and special rocks that Jim and Helen had collected in different places. As well as the leaves soaking up the light, there are glass balls and orbs which reflect it. These glass orbs were originally fishing floats which kept nets floating on the sea. Over here we have a vase by the potter William State Murray. Jim used to tell the story that he was so excited to have this vase in his home. But then a friend came and knocked it over and it smashed. Jim would never throw away anything that was broken, but he would always find a way of celebrating its brokenness and doing something with it. So he got in touch with the potter who made it. And the potter used a special Japanese technique called kintsugi, where he used gold to fix it and put it back together. So now the object has its own special story and even more beauty to it. Then, in front of everything else, there's a plexiglass disc by the artist Gregorio Vardanega. As people move past, their movement makes the disc spin slowly around, casting different reflections. And when you look at it, you can see all sorts of different things through it from different angles. You can choose to look at the surface of the disc and see the different distortions of light on it. Or perhaps if you get a bit closer, you can look through the disc and see the leaves and the roof beyond, magnified or transformed. Well, there's so much to see that I think it's over to you because the best way to look carefully is by drawing. So what I'd like you to do is to take your paper and draw a circle on it, or you can use a printed out template. Then I'd like you to get another sheet of paper and I'd like you to roll it up into a round shape like this round disc. Then take your paper 
and look at the window through it. You can move it around to try and find your favourite view through your viewfinder. Once you're there, stop, hold it close and look very carefully. What has been framed through the view? Then take your time and draw what you can see in the circle on your paper. Don't worry about making it perfect, but it's about your view that you can see from your chosen spot.
I'm sure you've all made fantastic drawings of your views of this window. So far, we've been in a series of 19th century cottages that were knocked together into one to create Kettle's Yard. But we're now going to go through to a new bit, to an extension of these cottages. I'm here in the extension finished in 1970 to create more space for art and also music. It's much bigger. It even smells different. What differences can you notice? And how does it feel different to look at this space compared to the other parts of the house? Have a talk with the person next to you about what you've noticed that looks and feels different in this space. Jim and Helen gathered most of their collection of art by being friends with the artists who made them. This wall is full of paintings by the artist Alfred Wallace. Although Jim never actually met Alfred Wallace, some other friends of theirs introduced them and they used to write letters to each other back and forth. And so all of these paintings were sent by Alfred Wallace to Jim in the post with a letter. Alfred Wallace's paintings are inspired by his memories of journeys he went on across the sea. Having these paintings on the wall reminded Jim and Helen of their own memories of being by the sea or of their friends who lived by the sea. Just like other things like these shells that sit underneath the painting. I'm now in Kettle's Yard Library where visitors are invited to sit down, pick up a book, get settled and stay for a while. In fact, Kettle's Yard is full of chairs and in normal times when you visit in person, visitors are invited to sit down, get comfortable and enjoy themselves in the different chairs. Jim believed that art was very powerful and could help us to slow down and stop in a busy, often overwhelming world. Jim himself had had a really difficult time in the First World War and he wanted to create Kettle's Yard as a place of refuge and calm where you could step away from everything else and just stop, 
sit and look surrounded by beauty. Each chair has been carefully positioned so that you can look at and notice different things that are in your eye line from that position. In the classroom or at home, try carefully moving your chair so that even though you're in the same spot, you're looking in a different direction. What does being in this new position help you to notice? Does it make you want to act differently, like start a conversation or focus on something different? Perhaps at home, where you've got more space, try out sitting in different locations and see what you can notice from that spot that you wouldn't notice anywhere else. I'm here in the downstairs extension of Kettle's Yard. Helen Ede was a great musician and she played the piano. And she and Jim were fascinated by what happens when music and art come together. So they built this much bigger space and they used to hold concerts here so that people could come and enjoy music surrounded by works of art. Look carefully. As they put together this space around the piano, they put other works of art that relate to music. What can you see that might fit with this theme? Here, we've got a painting by the artist Ben Nicholson showing a guitar and a violin joining together on a blocked background. Ben Nicholson was both a painter and a sculptor. And this painting has lines carved into the surface that seem to suggest the vibrations of the instruments as they play music. Another piece that relates to this theme is this sculpture, Linear Construction in Space Number 1, by the artist Nam Garbo. This work is made from a plastic perspex frame with thin nylon threads crossing it. Although the lines are actually straight, the arrangement makes them look curved and gives a sense of movement. In making the lines look like continual movement, rather than a frozen moment in time, this sculpture has its own rhythms, which is brought out even more because it sits on top of a musical instrument and is next to a painting of another. Now, for our final activity, let's explore sound more together. In a minute, in the classroom or back at home, I'd like you to make a series of short sounds after three. And then I'll say stop. Please make sure that you do stop. So first of all, after three, all together, I'd like you to make a really high-pitched sound. One, two, three, and stop. Second of all, all together, after three, I'd like you to make a really low pitched sound. One, two, three, and stop. Finally, all together, really quietly, I'd like you to make a sound at any pitch you want. One, two, three, and stop. Stay completely silent now. Could you hear any vibrations? Now we're going to think about what those different sounds that you've made might look like on the paper. How would you draw them? Would you draw them in wavy lines or spiky lines? or dots, or shapes. Have a think 
about how each sound would look and how they'd each be different. Take some time to do that back in the classroom. And now, have a look at the objects around me at Kettle's Yard. What different sounds would they make? And how might they look on the paper? Again, back in the classroom, take some time to talk about the sounds they might make and draw them on your paper.
Thank you for joining us for this session exploring Kettle's Yard today. There are lots of other ways that you can explore Kettle's Yard at home or in the classroom. So do look at our website, kettlesyard.co.uk or for our school section, it's forward slash schools. Or drop us an email on learning at kettlesyard.cam.ac.uk. We'd love to hear about what you talked about or see what you drew. So please do send us an email sharing with us what happened back in the classroom or at home.